Okay. Hello, can anyone hear me? Let me know if you can, because otherwise I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> Oh, you have audio, everyone. Hey, all right. Well, that's weird. Here, let me uh switch back over here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, now I have a couple little things I'm gonna do. Here's the. Whoops. There's your stream. There's your webcam. Bam. And here is coming the. Can I copy compressors in OBS? I think I can. Oh, if not, that's a simple fix. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for your patience. Um, funnily enough, I started off, whoa, activated a football giveaway. Hello, Wild. Thank you so much for the raid. I was uh, sitting here when I first started the stream, and uh, obviously it wasn't working, and I was in the middle of saying how if there were any quirks, uh, please let me know because it was the first time that I was streaming this new setup. And then I heard the raid alarm coming in. I was like, oh, wonderful. What fantastic timing for me to have some problems. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw my other filter on this new audio source. So that way you guys will be able to hear me even better. Because I should probably be a little quiet right now. Um, let me go here. And. There we go. Perfect. How about that? You guys hear me nice and clear? Please let me know if so. Um, and hopefully this new setup will, you know, cooperate with us. Mm, let's see here. I can throw my music on. All right, cool. Perfect. Um, where's my music at? First, I was having trouble with the onboard audio, like the, um, what's it called? Uh, computer audio. <laughs> and then I restarted the computer, and that started working, um, which, of course, is how computers work by magic. Um, so we're here. We're modding. I'm glad that everyone can hear me now. We got some uh, beautiful Jeremy and Julian soul music playing in the background. Um, thanks for being here, everyone. So today, uh, what we're doing is basically just updating mods. I'm still kind of in the... Uh, the middle of updating all of the outdated mods for 4.0, the ones that have not been updated by necessity in order to make other development changes in the past. Um, there's quite a few of them. Um, let's see here. I think remaining, I've got approximately, ooh, this looks like about 20, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, but the amount of time that each one takes is extremely variable. Like right now, I'm in the middle of updating clothing and clutter fixes, um, which is what we're going to jump into immediately. And that takes a very long time because that's a very intricate mod that makes many, many different types of changes, many of which are very small. And uh, if you're not looking, you'll miss them. But um, most mods are not like that. Most mods are fairly easy to go through and see what needs updating and see what does not. Um, in the case of some, I will have to... Normally what I like to do when updating or adding any new mod is go through every single record, record by record, and just see everything that it does, um, you know, account for any sort of change or just look at how it's constructed. But for the sake of time and just getting things done, for some I can't afford to do that. For example, um, Requiem just came out with its 2.02, 2.0.2 uh, uh, version, which includes a couple bug fixes. And if I were to apply that same, you know, going through every record philosophy to the Requiem update, it would take just an absolutely insane amount of time. Thank you, OG Rowey, for following. Um, so I can't do that. And in that case, what I would do instead is look at the changes. This is where I, I love authors who have detailed change logs. And I know that comes across as slightly hypocritical because there is no official set of changes that Ultimate Skyrim makes at this moment, but I would like to uh, fix that in the future. Uh, Chaotic Tabris says, 
So by the way, I was checking on why most spear mods don't have first person animations and it looks like it's because FNIS does not support them. So I guess once we start getting the open source alternatives to FNIS, this should be sorted out. It could well be Tabris, but also um, it's difficult to replace. From what I understand, I would hate to spread any sort of misinformation, of course. Uh, but as I understand it, it's very difficult to add in new animations in Skyrim's engine, like as it's kind of, well, okay. That can't be true based on FNIS adding all of like the animations. Sorry, it's very hard to like add in brand new um, uh, weapon animations. Either it's hard to add them in or it's hard to replace them. One of the two that makes um, adding like new types of weapons difficult. Um, and I'm not sure if an FNIS alternative will be able to circumvent that. Hopefully, because that would open up the floor for a lot of um, different mods to add some more weapons in that don't just swing side to side like all the weapons do. So let's take a look where I left off, which was DLC 01 Clothes Vampire. I usually do that by editor ID because it is uh, the most reliable way to um, measure out progress because sometimes names are the same. And form IDs can change based on your load order. Was it DLC? Oh, DLC 01. These all say DLC 1. There we go. Close Vampire. Bam. I'm going to sort back by form ID. Um, Tabris Wild, how you doing? Thanks for your raid, my friend. Uh, we seem to have everything all sorted. Knock on wood. This desk that I'm at is not wood, I don't think, but it is painted like wood, so hopefully that counts all the same. And actually, while we're here, I'm going to stand up because I've been sitting all day long. Um, I don't want to be anymore. It's good to stand up and stretch. You know? It's also hot in here. I might turn on the uh, air conditioning soon. I don't think you'll pick it up on the mic. And even if you do, sorry, that's gonna, the price you'll have to pay. <laughs> um, the last we left off, I was just doing the dark hood. So what we're doing here is um, going through clothing and clutter fixes and just forwarding any necessary changes. It's nice to do this every once in a while anyway because a lot of these plugins I haven't been through like record by record um, in a long time. Not since, uh, in some cases, not since the original 1.0 version. Um, DLC 01 Closed Vampire. I'm looking here. Okay, I remember these. I was looking at these because I just stopped doing this um, like 30 minutes ago to have a snack and get everything set up for the stream. Um, Quap Mob says an investment in standing desk may be in order. Funny you mentioned that, my friend, because that's exactly what I've got here. Um, I've got a... It's my... This is the two things I've purchased with the Patreon funds um, is the standing desk, which I absolutely love. Um, that's probably the most important thing that I've purchased in this room to be honest, just because I have like some, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of spina bifida, but it's a spinal condition that I have actually a very mild form, I should say, because it can range from not so bad to really bad to the point where people can't even feel their legs. And mine's not quite so intense. Um, but it does, I have like a lack of neural connections in like my lowest vertebrae, which is, let me tell you, it does not make for a good breaststroke kicking which is what I learned in high school. It was the reason why I couldn't do the intramural, or not intramural, sorry. Um, what does IM stand for? Something medley. Um, wild, you know it well. That is, hopefully you don't have it, my friend. Matt Shogun's got Spina, hey, Spina Bifida Club up in here. At least people know what I'm talking about. Um, like I said, I'm very lucky in that my uh, form or my specific diagnosis is fairly, fairly minimal compared to a lot of people, and I'm very lucky for that. But long story short, it's nice to have a desk that kind of accommodates um, some back problems, you know. And it's, I mean, for anyone, it's nice to stand up and stretch. And there's more and more studies coming out all the time that show uh, just a lot of the uh, negative effects from so many people sitting down all the time. There's so many jobs nowadays. We talk about this all the time. So many jobs nowadays that um, have people sitting down for long periods of time. So there's a more efforts kind of rising to um, help people stay healthy and circulated. Oh, Shogun, I'm so sorry to hear that, man. Um, that is a more severe case of spina bifida. That's exactly like what I'm talking about. 
Um, anyway, here, this is where I left off. Yeah, because I remember doing these moth priest robes. Um, this is another cool thing about getting to update a mod like clothing and clutter fixes. Sometimes it's just so cool to like go through like a bunch of different armors or weapons or items or something. Just any amount of like the items that are in the game now and just kind of marvel at how much shit there is to actually do in Skyrim and how many cool items and pieces of equipment there are to find. That's a good point, Shogun. It's like you're here typing. I mean, I like that attitude that you've got. Um, but anyway, I don't know. It's really fun. And a lot of this stuff is default too. like clothing and clutter fixes doesn't add a lot of proprietary. Um, I mean, it adds depends on how you define a lot, but most of what it does is editing, um, pre-existing gear and stuff that was already in the, uh, the game to start with or in the DLCs just goes to show you how much content there actually is in a game like Skyrim. If you're really willing to squeeze every bit out that you can, um, there's the ethereal crown. That's a, a big one. That's a very important item right there. I won't spoil it for you if you don't know what it is. Okay, so we're basically going through here. And um, most of the time, these red bars are going to show us everything we need. Um, or at least they're better markers, kind of like flags for something will need to be done in that case. Um, but not always. Sometimes, even in these... Uh, um, records that don't really list a direct conflict there will still need to be uh, changed things that's what you got to pay attention for and here's an interesting one what I've been doing for this update is um, clothing and clutter fixes does a uh, an interesting thing it's very cool um, as many of you know by default in the game um, you can't wear circlets with hoods um, and I mean that it doesn't really makes sense from like a like a just like a physical perspective i guess you could say because very obviously the way that hoods are made like in skyrim you could totally wear a circlet with it and it looks cool as hell um so uh clothing clutter fixes makes it so you can wear both of those things and it's relatively simple thank you shogun for following um you just have to go over here to the body template slots and you can see here like for example um cryptovers fixes rectified has this uh vampire hood set to occupy the hair slot and the circlet slot so that means that if you wear this you're not going to see your hair first of all and also you're not going to be able to wear a circlet with it because it maintains both um even though it looks like it shouldn't now we can do this and forward the change from clothing and clutter fixes and that now allows um for you to wear a circlet with this hood which is cool but it creates a particular problem um, when it comes to Requiem, and that is that adding one additional... You can now wear two items where you could formerly wear one, and both of them are enchantable. And it's that both of them being enchantable part that creates a major balance problem, because having even just one more enchantment um, can be a huge uh, balance problem in Requiem. This is why any sort of patch for a cloak mod that you'll find, you know, all of your winter is coming cloaks or just anything like that um any requiem patch will typically include the keyword for disallowing enchanting on those items so that you can't gain that additional enchantment slot because if you're not careful um, and you allow that it can really mess with the intended balance of the game so that's basically what we're doing too is in fact i'll actually have to go up because i restarted X edit wild says i try to catalog all the items so i can find replacements it's sweet raptor jesus yeah man and once you start adding in uh mods like immersive armors and like heavy armory alone are easily like an additional thousand items combined if not more if not like two thousand um so it can be very difficult but i actually have to do a fair bit of that myself especially with the crafting overhaul spreadsheets are your friend i guess liz has been showing me a whole bunch of spreadsheet tips and tricks that she has picked up in her storied career as a consultant. Um, what was I looking for? I'm looking for another. Actually, any one of these could have what I'm looking for. Um, there it is. Boom. See, we got lucky. Magic disallow enchanting. So all I did there was copy and paste, or sorry, just copy the form ID for that keyword which means i can now very easily go back down to vampire hood take my null reference make it an actual reference and bam boom the vampire hood is now um not enchantable so that'll stop that 
loophole from happening. So it's little things like that that you kind of have to look for um, and you just kind of have to know about. That's, I guess, what comes with experience, I suppose. Um, I believe Requiem might also have like a guide for patching. I'm assuming that's where people pick that up, but I just picked it up from people looking at other people's patches, you know. Um, that's all good. Ring of the Erudite. See, I'm seeing things here that I feel like I already went through, but that doesn't mean that I did. It could mean, that, in fact, they're, watch this. See, here's Ring of the Beast. I definitely went through that already, which makes me wonder, is this out of order or are there two of them? There's not. That is weird. Huh. Well, maybe I just happened upon it earlier. Um, Chaotic Tabra says there is a guy, but I'm not sure if it's this complete. Um, I would imagine that's the case. Also, when it comes to Ultimate Skyrim in particular, there's many other things that you have to consider, unfortunately. Um, I guess it's not, you know, it's just, it's not that much more. Um, but you do need to know kind of like what to look for. If you're trying to patch a mod for Ultimate Skyrim, just because there's a, basically you have to patch it for more mods besides Requiem, ones that are um, core parts of the experience that will feel um, wrong if you don't put stuff in. A rune, thanks so. I did, I've man, I just realized that you're in this chat too. Jeez, thanks so much uh, for stopping by briefly. For any of you who don't know, Rune Wolf is a, a member of the Ultimate Skyrim team. He's Ultimate Skyrim Papa. Good night, my friend. Um, all right, what do we got? Bloody foot wraps. Oh, wonderful. Now, see, I know that actually gives me pause. This is bad. Okay, no, because the... Oh, you're fucking joking me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Master robes, that's fine. Because I'm seeing things here that I definitely patched. And some of them don't have the changes that I made. Okay, these all do. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I'm freaking myself out unnecessarily here. But I definitely went through all these. Okay, well, I need to go up and... Um, Thalmor robes. Oh, you're kidding me. What the hell could have happened here? Hold on a second. Well, this task may have just become a lot bigger. That one I wouldn't have done anything to. This one I did. What the hell? This would be... Okay, give me a second here, because, all right, that's fine. So what I'm checking on here, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see actually, because it's in 4K, um, the model file name right here at the bottom of clothing and clutter fixes did not match the Ultimate Skyrim entries before, now they do. So that tells me that these changes were definitely saved. Um, that one's fine, these are kept that way on purpose. Um, so is that. Yeah, so these changes are all forwarded. That makes no sense to me. Because I could swear. And yet some of them are not. This is weird. I've never encountered something like this before. See, like this one, I totally forwarded. I changed that one too. Something about maybe when, and what I'm thinking here is that a version, maybe it's after a certain point. Those would be the same. Ultimate Skyrim. Yeah, see, I kept that one. This is very odd. You'll have to give me... Uh, yeah, see, like this, Black Mage Hood, I definitely, well, that's the unplayable one, but something like this, I remember, this was just like an hour ago that I went through, and I 
made like all these changes to these and now suddenly they're not showing up. Hey lady, how you doing? Um, fuck me. Well, this is annoying, but I think I might know what would have happened here. I have a bad habit of um, unlocking mod organizer when I probably shouldn't. Like you can see here um, that Emma was locked while the executable is running for TES5 edit. Um, and unlocking that generally doesn't cause a whole lot of problems. Um, but it can uh, cause your backed up plugins to end up somewhere else here in Overwrite, for example. Now, normally the uh, backups for Ultimate Skyrim, for example, um, are uh, stored in the same folder as the mod. Lady asks, how am I? Well, I could be... I'm fine, thank you very much, in the grand scheme of things, lady. Um, but I'm a little bit alarmed here because I feel as though a bunch of the work that I did about an hour ago is not showing up. Okay, so 413. What is today? That's not the right thing. Here we go. Today is 621. 620 is the last saved plugin, so that doesn't. That's okay. Um, hmm. TS5 edit backups. Let's see if anything shows up here. Um, yeah, I see nothing in there. And about the last thing that I can check here would be the Ultimate Skyrim folder. and check these TES5 edit backups and see what we got there. This is going to be a huge folder, I think. It's lagging my thing, just trying to get it. Okay. Let us see what we've got. All right, now this is the most recent one. Um, from what is this? 2016-1108. That's not correct. So there's backups in this folder dating back to 2016. That's fucking crazy. I never really go in here. Here we go. Okay, 2018, 06, 21, 16, 27. So this is the most recent one. That would be what? Um, 621, that's our date. And then 16, that's four. That one we just did. That's a moment ago. And this is the one from earlier. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to copy that file. Um, in fact, can I just open this? in the fuck it why am i even doing this in this interface here let's bring it in go into mod organizer for any of you who don't know those of you who don't know that is you can go man this music is so epic i feel like it fits how scared i am that this work would be gone um for those of you who don't know you can actually i mean mod organizer is just a window that shows um like file structures basically um, so everything you see here corresponds to like the mod folders, like in the actual installation folder for mod organizer. So most of the time when I install stuff, I do it very backwards. I like throw it into folders uh, on the back end of mod organizer, so to speak. And then I refresh mod organizer because I trust it more. It's just easier that way too. Like Windows File Explorer is obviously a little bit easier to use than something like this. Okay, so we've got this bad boy. Um, where are we at? Sort by name. We're going 2018, 621. So here's our guy. That would be 125502. That's actually problematic because that means that this backup is from, what is it? One o'clock. That is not ideal because that's just, that's not even going to have all of the what's it called all the data I don't know what the hell has happened here well either way here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take I know you guys can't see what I'm doing right now but give me a quick moment we call this backup one and then we're gonna call this other one backup latest And then we will at least have a point of reference to see what's going on here. Um, and if we lose it, we lose it. 
sometimes that's just how it goes and it wouldn't be the first time something like this has happened and honestly I've lost a lot more work than that before um, but I would really like not to have lost it because it's not exactly I mean it's fun enough the first time through because I'm a strange individual and I find this stuff kind of fun um, but it's definitely not that fun the second time through let's see here guys um, you guys can't hear the music? Oh my god. Wait, what the hell? This entire time I've been playing music. Um, and I didn't have the thing enabled. Well, you can hear it now, hopefully. Now let's see here. I'm gonna refresh this bad boy. We should have two new plugins right at the bottom. We do. It's Ultimate Skyrim Backup 1 and Ultimate Skyrim Backup Latest. Look, Darren Sprud just subscribed. That's on YouTube. Thank you, Darren, if you're around. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put them right there, and we're gonna fire this bad boy back up. And this time, we're just gonna hit Shift OK, and that's gonna skip loading references. Um, so it's gonna do, it's gonna load our stuff much faster than it would otherwise. Most of the time, I load these with the reference data because I use it all the time. Um, but for this case, we're not gonna be doing that. Now we're going up to clothing and clutter fixes. Let's go, is it armor? Oh, here, another good way to check. I already went through like armor add-ons um, and I had to make some changes. You're like to Ulfric's torso. Um, okay, well the backup latest has it. See, nothing here is red almost. So all of those, these changes seem to have carried over to remember what actually needed not a whole lot needed changing here these did weird so it's like selectively some things saved but other things did not and it's not even by like recency either which is the weird part emperor's robes i don't care about that that's fine as it is where's something that i know would be edited common clothes um, that one I wouldn't have minded. How about the Greybeard's robes? That's all. See, these are same thing. None of this. But this did. I don't understand that. I don't know. There's no rhyme or reason to it, but, uh, it's looking like at least a, like something like these two. Wild gifted a tier one sub to Chaotic Tabris. It's their first gift sub in the channel. That's cool. I actually don't know what any of that means. <laughs> but, um, thank you. <laughs> Hi, BB. Adjusting your Excel spreadsheets again, I see. That's what I do every day, Zazamari. Not every day, but most every day. See, this... This is so strange. I've really never encountered anything like this before. Um, common shoes. I remember making that change. And yet, so many of these things, especially with these hoods, it's like the changes j are just gone. Common clothes. Common cap. And see, I added the disallow enchanting. Like, that one's there. I don't get it. That is so weird. Light headscarf. Same thing as there. I don't know. Well, it looks like some of the changes... So, some of the stuff is there. Some is not, for reasons I, I frankly don't understand. Um, but what are you going to do? I guess we'll just have to go through record by record and fix the stuff that needs to be refixed. See, a lot of this, that's all there too. Weird. Alright, well, we kind of have our answer. Really, it doesn't change anything. You know, what needs to be changed will have to be redone anyway. Um, see, by the way, now that I'm an affiliate, I can have an emote. Oh. I wonder, how does that work? Um, or what does it mean, even? Alright, well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to close this out. And now we're going to load it back. We can get rid of these two. We'll just throw them down here for now. And then... Well, that sucks, frankly. Um, just because, I mean, everyone hates losing work, right? It's like having a document open when you're in school and then your power goes out and it doesn't auto-save. 
But what are you going to do? Sometimes it just happens that way. You guys go right here. And now we're going to load this bad, bad boy, excuse me, back up with all the reference data. And just bite the bullet. Do it again. Hopefully we won't have to redo that much. And maybe we'll even learn something about what happened there. Thank you guys for your patience. Um, I mean, I amount that it's all the same. Put my camera on my cat. No one wants to see my pretty face. Oh, I will do that later in the stream. I promise you I'll go in and bother her and bring her on camera. Because she's my favorite. I was bothering her earlier. I gave her um, some treats because I don't do that very often. Because, uh, you know you know what I'm saying. She's a little bit on the, uh, on the heftier side. Kolali just subscribed. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Um, I don't really know how the subscriptions work yet. I just barely got Twitch affiliate um, the other day. Um, so if anyone has any insight into how any of this works, really, I would greatly appreciate it. Zazamaria says, my cats are switching to scheduled feeding from grazing. They are not pleased. Oh, I imagine that's the case. Um, if you're able to eat whenever you want and then suddenly you can't, um, I could imagine them not enjoying that very much. Oh well, they'll learn boundaries, right? It's the only thing that we can do to really uh, improve our relationship with anyone. Anyone and everyone, not just animals. People need boundaries too sometimes. Turn down. This is one of the features that I'm very proud of. Lady says, there's a cat. I want to see a kitty. Okay. Boundaries and treats. Uh, good uh, methods for human interaction as well, I'd say. Fine, here I'll go and get the cat really fast. I mean, we're sitting here waiting anyway, right? Give me two seconds. Say hi. Staring in the mic. Hello. Hi. She's spoiled. If you can't tell by her hefty size. She's a big cat. Huh. Say hello to the nice people. I wonder if you can hear her purring. Let's see. I don't know if that comes across. Mike's pretty sensitive, so it might. Mm -hmm. She was asleep. Although, really, she's usually this lethargic during the day, to be honest. Um, she really only gets very active when we are trying to sleep and when it's 3 in the morning. Oh, cat stream. Wild says, subs are the financial model used for streamers. They cost $5, $10, or $25 per month. There's a 50-50 split between caster and Twitch. Bits are one bit equals one cent. This has been your daily Twitch PSA. Thanks so much, Wild, for that elucidation, because I really had no idea. Oh, I love that cat so much, even though she's an asshole. Uh, Wild says, also more subs equals more emotes you can have. These emotes are available in all channels on Twitch. Wow. Um, so I suppose that I have one then, right? Um, is there a way I can enable it? Or what exactly is like an emote? Is this some sort of thing that appears in chat, I wonder? And also I wonder if it would show up in the chat VOD. I'm learning so much, it seems. Okay, back on task here. Um, where is my man? Clothing and clutter fixes. Um, lady says I love cats. I have two. They are a handful. But I love them all the same. That's kind of how cats go, I suppose. Um, I have three. One for each tier. They're custom emotes. My gosh. Um, what is, like, what does an emote look like, even? Or could I enable one now? Or just, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll... How about after this? You can put whatever you want as long as it does not break the rules. I getcha. Well, I'm going to look into that after this stream. Um, and I'll see what kind of emote 
options I have going. Until then, looks like, oh, I'm going to check this too. Okay, so this is all still the same. I don't know what happened. Um, but it's like we've lost some data and we've kept others. Wild my emotes has... Wow! Oh my gosh! Gotcha. You have beautiful emotes like this one. Perfect. Alright, I feel like I could have some fun with that. Um, oh, so you can like take them into like another person's like channel? Kalali says that anyone with an Amazon Prime account gets a free sub using your Prime account if you've tied it to your Twitch account. Wow. Damn. So, I mean, business integrations, man. That's the way it goes. Okay. Back... Oh, I'm so easily distracted. Back on task here. I've never seen a situation like this whereby um, some data is lost um, and other data is not, like, chronologically. That's very strange. Now, sometimes it'll happen where Xedit fails to save properly, um, but then, obviously, all of the new data past the point when you last saved successfully is what's lost. Here, it's like we've lost all different kinds of stuff, um, and the order in which I've lost it seems arbitrary. Okay, these common shoes. This is all fine and dandy. Um, that's all good. Common stitched boots. This is where it's kind of fun, right? Because you get to see all these different varieties of item that are in here. Smokeless Joe says, Hello, Belmont Boy in chat. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Talking about losing data and how... But then here, it seems like we've got a bunch of it back anyway. I'm scrolling back down the stuff that I know well whatever there's not that much we're just gonna go through every single one just in case um, this is interesting common hood give me here maybe that music is scary this sounds like oblivion dungeon music it is Yep, that's what it is. I feel like I can picture myself um, running through caves. Just generic, nondescript caves of Oblivion. I've been watching Oblivion, actually, an Oblivion Let's Play by the absolutely wonderful Lefebvre Bros. If you guys have not seen them, um, they are really cool. Man, I'm confusing myself with this stuff. Um, Lefebvre Bros are very cool guys. They, if you remember those original kind of like memes from back in the day where it's like this dude and his brother just like perfectly imitated um, NPCs from Oblivion and just uh, they're like made these really funny Oblivio or Oblivios, vi Oblivion videos um, just called like Oblivion 1 and Oblivion 2. A little while back, these same brothers started a let's play channel and have been let's playing oblivion and it's kind of like this interesting thing because um they were are like definitely like amateur let's players right i mean any let's player is kind of amateur but there is like a, a modicum of professionalism to it um so they started let's playing and actually pewdiepie shouted them out which got them like a, a lot of traction initially um, but, you know, it's just, like, two random people doing a Let's Play. And it's awesome. It's, like, really, really good. Um, they have wonderful chemistry together. And are just, like, an absolute delight to watch, at least in my opinion. Um, why is that a different object bound? That's okay. Uh, so I really enjoy it quite a lot. I actually subscribe to them or contribute to them on Patreon. Um, and they're really dope. And I highly recommend them if you are looking for a very chill let's play they only put out like one video a week it's like a 30 minute long video so it's definitely substantial um but i could sit there and watch them play for you know hours and hours um smokeless joe says i've still yet to really play oblivion didn't really enjoy the leveling system um yeah that is i'd say the most common criticism with oblivion is the leveling system it's um very very scaled it's designed to be very accessible. It was the first console Elder Scrolls 
Um, and they really wanted, I think... Well, okay. The whole idea of the scaled world, um, I think a lot of people look at it as, like, dumbing down the game, right? And you could kind of argue that, but I, I know that Bethesda did that because they thought it would make the best experience. Um, and, like, level scaling is kind of interesting in that regard because... Um, like, you can kind of get what they're going for. Oh, that's right. Tabris, you're right that Marwin was on Xbox, but I kind of... In fact, I actually played Marwin on Xbox the first time I ever played an Elder Scrolls game. I almost don't count it in my mind because, to me, that one was like... It was very clearly an RPG designed for PC that they just happened to be able to port to Xbox, um, whereas Oblivion was very much designed from the beginning to be on the consoles. That's kind of like the, the difference in my head. Um, but anyway, level scaling brings about like a certain type of experience whereby like I get what they're going for. Like I said, like they want the experience to remain um, challenging as the game progresses. It just so happens that the world is so scaled and the scaling is so dialed in that you end up kind of facing the same level of difficulty for the entire experience, or in some cases, um, like, shit becomes way, way harder at the end of the game than it ever was at the beginning of the game, which is the opposite of how most progression systems work. Graybeard hood. So, like, this... I could swear I edited. Um, I don't know. Kalali says, okay, I really need to go get something for dinner. Be back in a bit. I hope you enjoy your dinner, my friend. <sighs> okay. Um, I confuse myself whenever I'm on the stream. I gotta say, I gotta get better at um, multitasking. I say this in every stream. But this stuff that I do here is so detail-oriented that it can be somewhat difficult for me to keep tabs on both chat and also make sure that I'm doing good work here in the actual development but that's the kicker isn't it i still think that if uh balian can beat ultimate skyrim while streaming and chatting and with permadeath then i should be able to do development um while doing the same right ace fury what's up man thank you so much for stopping by um you haven't missed honestly a, a ton you missed mostly um me trying to figure out why some work that i had done previously was inexplicably lost um, what are you gonna do this one's interesting because requiem by default has this hood as only occupying the hair slot um, you don't see that super often most of the time requiem takes hoods and makes them occupy both for that enchantment um, balance issue the one I was talking about before <laughs> excuse me silver ring rough spun tunic um, Cryptopers fixes rectified. I remember all this. So it's possible... I don't know. I don't know what has happened. But, uh... It is what it is. Okay, and I added the magic disallow enchanting. Leather hood. I remember all this. I remember head bandages and arm bandages. Um... It's weird. You can put these on in clothing and clutter fixes? Chaotic Tabris has recently re replayed my way through Baldur's Gate 1 and started Baldur's Gate 2. Man, the game design is awesome. They know how to have an unleveled open world without that kind of level scaling. And yet there are a few situations where you can just walk into an overpowered encounter. There are few situations where you can just walk into an overpowered encounter. Um, it is, it's such an interesting and difficult problem. Um, the idea of these scaled or unscaled worlds worlds excuse me and the issue of curating an experience right because you're like you we run an, any any person who ever designs a system of any kind it doesn't even have to be game design will run into this problem like let's say like you film a movie or like anyone who's designing anything um for an audience of more than one has a difficult problem on their hands because people experience things so differently, like no matter what. Um, the lens through which we view anything is so personalized that it becomes quite a difficult problem to um, 
just make sure that everyone is getting the experience you intend. It's virtually impossible to do that. Um, and what you'll have is like, um, like something like a, a common criticism of Requiem, right? Is that um, it's too easy to end up fighting against monsters that are way, way, way too tough for you to handle. Um, like you could, you know, because like the open world nature of Skyrim, Skyrim was designed from the bottom, so that or from the beginning, so that you can go almost anywhere and still be able to fight whatever's there. Oblivion, as another example, is definitely designed this way, where they wanted it very clearly so that you could just haul off in any direction, and whatever you find there, there was going to be something that was within your, um, you know, kind of scope of what your character could do. Um, when you take a, an experience like Requiem and you change it so that, like, there are difficult creatures in areas that are still accessible to the player because of the open world kind of fundamental nature, nature of the game, um, you've now kind of opened up uh, the experience so that, like, one person might go, oh my god, it's so awesome how uh, I can, like, run into things that, that can kill me, so I'm so much more careful now, and, and I, I get the importance of, like, preparing. And that's obviously what they were going for, right? And then you have, like, another player who just, like, hears that Requiem is cool, doesn't really understand, um, maybe doesn't find, like, the supplemental materials if it doesn't tell you in the game, because the game doesn't really tell you, like, how Requiem works. Like, there's not, not a whole lot of in-game material to tell you like, don't go here because these things are really hard compared to the base game. So you have people who play it, they encounter something like that, um, it whoops their ass, and immediately they're, like, not having fun. And they don't understand, like, what's going on. And uh, it's like, what do you do to fix that? You know what I mean? Like, do you put a bunch of stuff in the game? That I'm going to turn down this music a little bit because it's distracting me. Do you put a bunch of text in the game that kind of, like, explains how certain enemies are, like, really, really, you know, um, powerful and that you shouldn't go and face them if you don't have, like, this set of preparations. Like, that would be one way to do it. Arguably a cool way because it makes it, um, I forget what the word is. Um, there's a word that I'm looking for that means, it's diegetic. Um, it's part of the game world, and so that's kind of cool because you're going to like, oh, I read this book on, like, Falmer, and uh, now... I know that, like, Falmer are, like, really, really dangerous, and, like, I learned that from, like, something in the world. I like that a whole lot. Um, hey, Snot Nose, how you doing? But then also, like, a lot of players are not gonna read that, like, in the game, like, if it's optional, um, because they're not interested in reading the books, so they'll completely bypass that, and they still end up getting upset. Um, you could take that text and put it in, like, a dialogue box or something, then it's basically, like, a tutorial, and then you're, like, forcing the information in someone's, like, face, um, and then they might have a bad time there. The point being, there's just so many, like, challenges to creating an experience that everyone is going to enjoy. It's virtually impossible. Um, and creating, like, a scaling model that makes sense. Um, and so I guess maybe to round it back to what Chaotic Tabris was saying, it can be really nice when you play a game that is so carefully designed with such a clear vision from the ground up, like Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, um, where, like, the scaling, it, like, it's, I, I played Baldur's Gate 1 when I was a kid, um, I never ended up playing 2, but I do think that he's right, in that, like, from what I remember playing of 1, um, it did feel like I could encounter things that were, like, too tough, um, but not so outrageously tough, and there was something, typically, that would kind of clue you into the fact that there was something bad here, um, and you still had, like, a ton of freedom to, like, go around and, like, feel the actual progression of your character. You could revisit areas from before where you formerly got your ass whooped and, like, compare your level against the stuff that whooped your ass and you're now much stronger. I mean, I'm kind of rambling here, but it's a, it's a tough problem and an interesting one to try and solve. And something that I think most people who are into, like, RPGs um, have opinions on, like, how they think it can be solved, what the good ways to do it are. Um, I don't know. Got kind of sidetracked there on a little bit of a tangent, I'd say. Back to actual development. <sighs> oh, I got myself all jazzed up talking about like world design and scaling design. Um, like I said, I don't get as much done when I'm doing the development streams. But uh, that's kind of the point, at least a little bit, because with this stuff, I get to interact with you guys. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll get off my soapbox. Um, it's not a very good soapbox when you uh, are just ranting and not really saying anything of consequence. Like I said, the closest thing to a core through line there is that um, it's hard to design a game world that is open and also provides a curated experience and also that you're never going to please anyone. That's a good takeaway. Or everyone, not anyone. Hopefully you please someone. It's like if you just... It's not exactly a novel thought, right? But if you're trying to please everyone, not going to work. Mm -hmm. As a lady says... Excuse me. I know some people cringe really hard when they hear other people eat ice cubes. Lady says, you are just setting yourself up for failure if you try to please everyone. Diversity of mankind is both a blessing and a curse. You just need to do what you want and never worry about pleasing everyone. Very well said, lady. Speaking of which, I'm going to do what I want and evaluate the barkeeper's clothes and shoes. Common shoes. Um, that's all fine. I'm just going to go through here. See, I, I made these changes. Magic to slow enchanting. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. That one's there. Dark common clothes. Let's see, these are all there. And that one. Mourner's headscarf. Sad. Um, so what these, uh, these hood changes are going to allow you to do which is something I think is very cool, is um, the hoods are divorced from the robes. There are actually quite a lot of um, outfits in Skyrim that make it, so you have to wear a certain hood um, with a certain robe, and that kind of sucks a little bit, right? Because then you're a little bit limited um, in terms of how you can dress up your character, which is a very fun part of RPGs, I think. Or, I mean, most RPGs in some way are about acquiring new gear and stuff, and it's kind of lame when you have one bit of gear that takes up an entire slot, um, an entire two slots, rather. Uh, Chaotic Tabber says, I've been studying that a lot from a product design perspective in university. It's really interesting stuff. It is tremendously interesting. I remember reading a article, an article one time, that talked about how when you are designing a product or an experience or whatever, well, okay, for the sake of brevity, we'll say, let's say you're designing an app. Um, basically, this article posited that um, there are several different types of users ranging from like power users, like people who understand how your app works so well because maybe they're designers themselves or they just have a high level of technical knowledge um they could even like build it themselves maybe if they they wanted to that's like the level of knowledge that a power user has at the other end of the spectrum you have the person who has such a lack of understanding or ability or combination of the two that they cannot use your app um and so you're figuring out like which subsection of this spectrum right uh, your app is going to be designed for and who it's it's targeted towards because obviously there's not a whole lot of point in targeting an app towards people who won't be capable of using it. Um, but the article basically said that even when you think you're designing for like the standard user um, who should be able to use your app, like you are probably severely overestimating the technical competency of like average user and so it kind of encourages designers to well one to really think as though they were a like imagine your most average user who you think will still be able to use your app and then like crank down your iq by like 10 to the best of your ability um i, I don't say that to be disparaging but just to you know, present like a, a realistic kind of portrayal of like just the bell curve of like usability and like technical proficiency um but then also what you need to do as a designer is have testers lots and lots of testing 
um, of you know people of all different kinds, people of different backgrounds, people of different skill sets, and that's how you will really discover those usability flaws and those problems that you really can fix. You would just never think of it yourself because if you're designing something, chances are you're pretty proficient in and of yourself. Um, and so it can be hard to kind of take yourself out of that tunnel vision of the knowledgeable individual, if that makes sense. Snotnose says, have you tried out any new vampire mods yet to replace VT? We have not, Snotnose. Not anything serious. Um, I know that Gato was messing around with one such vampire mod a little while ago. Um, I am trying to remember the name, um, but I can't do it at the moment. Um, fuck, what was it called? Let me even check. Let me check real fast. Um, the reason it seemed cool is because... Oh, here comes Discord. Um, the reason that it seemed cool is because it's like a pretty hardcore experience. Um, kind of requiem e. Oh, Discord got an update. Look at that. Um, but that was just kind of like cursory tests. Like for funsies. And nothing very serious. Nothing like actual testing. Um... This is actually going to take a while to go through. Uh, I do. Ooh. This is pretty old. Let's see. This might be it. In two seconds. Um, nope. Can't find it at the moment. Sorry, can't remember. But if I do remember, I'll let you know. Furfante, hello my friend. Oh, and Shado Shane, solution, make a big red button for users with sentient AI to make sure everything goes over well. I mean, one day, that might not be like a far-fetched solution. Um, Chaotic Tabris, oh man, there's a couple things I miss here. It says, Amari says, we do the same thing in IT. Imagine how dumb your users could be in your environment. Plan around preventing them from setting everything on fire. That is the, if I could pick a single like core user experience goal for Ultimate Skyrim, that is it. Um, Chaotic Tabra says, I think it's hard to find the sweet spot. I personally think people having, people have been underestimating the user too much. It depends on what you're talking about, but I don't know. I, I would call that a case by case basis. Snotno says sacrosanct maybe. It wasn't sacrosanct. That's the Eni Scion one, I believe. Um, but I have heard of that. For Fonte, we're talking about design and, um, the nature of trying to program uh, an experience or a system for a wide variety of people and the difficulties therein. Um, lady asks, what is wrong with vampiric thirst? Mainly, I, I hate to say something's wrong with it because it is a wonderful, oh, I just fucking figured it out. This is it. This is it right here. This is where all of the work did not save for some reason what the hell dude so i remember exiting out or this is earlier before i started streaming with you guys um exiting out to check and see how archmage was stylized in game um just because like requiem here wants to make it hyphenated cryptovers fixes rectified wants to do it a different way um so i wanted to see how the game did it just so i could remain consistent just a real quick check um, so I exited out there and then came back in and then made a bunch more changes. And it seems like everything past this point is where the changes have not been made. I bet you. I need to find something that would be a good example that wouldn't have already been. Yeah, see right here. Definitely that would have already been there. All right. What the fuck? That's so fucked up, man. I wonder why that is. Yeah, because I was, like, confused, too, because everything I had um, sorted through before that was all there still. I was, ugh. Well, at least we know now. That's good. Anyway, lady, back on track. Um, Vampiric Thirst is wonderful. It's a wonderful mod. It has a lot of really cool ideas. It's just overpowered for the sake of Requiem, like, severely so. Um, it's, like, basic, I mean, vampirism in default Requiem can already be, like, a huge, huge boon to a character and it can kind of put the game on easy mode um we have a couple small balance tweaks planned for 4.0 to kind of prevent that um but vampiric thirst initially i tried looking at it in terms of balancing it like appropriately um and it just became obvious over time that there was no way to do that um 
Tabra says, is it Balua Sanguinare? It was not, although, funny you mentioned that mod, because that was the first ever vampirism mod that I used for Skyrim, and I have very fond memories of that, a couple different playthroughs where I was focusing on vampirism through Balua Sanguinare. It's been years, actually, since I went back and looked at it, um, like, seriously. Uh, like I said, I haven't been looking too intensely at overhauling vampirism at the moment, just because there have been bigger fish to fry, unfortunately. Alright, well now you guys get to watch me go through this fucking nonsense. That's alright, that's what the whole stream is, I guess. It's all the same to you guys. For me, it's nonsense, because I already did it, and I don't like repeating work. But what are you gonna do? Um, that's okay. I actually didn't even need to overwrite that one, I just instinctively did it anyway. Miner's clothes, that's okay. Nothing there that needs to change. Noble fur trimmed clothes, y'all good. What I'm really looking for here is stuff like this, changes to the models. So if you guys don't know this, um, the new version of clothing and clutter fixes is awesome. Um, it makes a bunch of changes to the textures and models of many different clothing items across the game, and they are beautiful. Um, so it is, uh, that's what we're, we're looking for, especially is um, changes to textures and models. Um, also, it now requires, or maybe even required before, but I don't think so, uh, rustic clothing, um, which is d actually a mod that I was going to include anyway. It was definitely on the, uh, the non-essential implementation list, um, just because I like what it does and because we needed some overhauls on those clothing textures. They're very ugly. It's now a required mod because one of our required mods requires it. So, bing bang, ipso facto, ya in. Rustic clothing. Um, fine arm guards is fine with me. Get it? I promise I did not make that pun on purpose. Also, that song always kind of gives me chills because I would hear it a lot when I was a kid. Because that's what happens. That's the song that plays when you die in Morrowind. Fine for mantle clothes. Noble for mantle clothes. I don't care about that. Caldic Tabris says, Vampirism on Requiem is meant as endgame content because Requiem is balanced around the vanilla start. Since vampires are high-level enemies, there was simply no way to become a vampire unless you were high enough level to fight them. That is very true. Um, it was basically... You weren't supposed to contract Vampirism until you were already fairly high up there anyway, which solved a lot of the problems of getting Vampirism early and turning the whole game's progression inside out. Upside down, maybe, would be the more typical expression, but inside out feels more appropriate for a vampire. Speaking of vampires, actually, um, this one's fine. I watched a movie the other day, excuse me, with Tyler, that was very funny. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have seen it. I think it's called What We Do in the Dark, um, but it's kind of a mockumentary, and it's uh, a New Zealand film. Made by the Kiwis. I hope that's not a derogatory term, Kiwis. I mean it endearingly, if so. Um, but it has Jermaine Clement of Flight of the Concords in it. Um, and it's just a really funny, like, fresh take on, like, a vampire film. And I highly recommend it. It's not that long, either. Rustic clothing, baby. Alright, so these should all be the same. I remember this. There's nothing really to change here. Um, Amulet of Xenathar. Does not need any changes either. Uh, Nocturnal's hat. <laughs> That's funny to me for some reason. The idea of Nocturnal just wearing like a hat. I'm imagining like a huge trucker cap. Wild says, love that show and there's a TV show coming soon. Really? Oh man. Uh, hopefully, I'm assuming with a lot of the same characters, but I would definitely watch that. And it kind of lends itself very well um, to like a TV show format, I would imagine. It almost feels like The Office um, which I would imagine is like kind of a direct inspiration. Uh, that's all fine. Fine and dandy. Ring of pure mixtures, huh? Huh. I don't know. Ooh, silver necklace, Andrew's amulet of RK. I Sorry, I got a little confused there for a moment because... I feel like I'm seeing some stuff that I don't remember seeing the first time through. So it almost makes me wonder 
Ah, I don't know. Um, Shadow Shane says, The only other vampire overhaul I could think of is Better Vampires. Always used it before Vampiric Thirst. Um, I have also used Better Vampires in the past, and I can say that is not the one Gato was thinking about um, that was messing around with. The one that he was messing around with was fairly, like, um, obscure. Like, I'd never heard of it before, um, but it seemed kind of promising. Let me give it, like, a quick Google search and see what I can find. Go. Um, Sacrosanct. It's like a fairly new one. Maybe if I even go to the Skyrim Nexus. And then I go, I search vampire. <sighs> Better vampires. No, I'm going to search. And then we're going to sort by new. I bet you we're going to get a bunch of booby follower mods. Although that seems like if you search for anything on the Nexus, you'll find that. Date published. Okay. That makes sense to me. Um, Sacrosanct. Let me see. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time looking for this, but it's right on the tip of my tongue. Right on the tip of my fangs. <laughs> And I don't see it off hand. Oh, that's cool. There's like a dope vampire follower lady with a fro. I don't know. I don't see it. It's on the first two pages. Uh, like I said, if I figure it out or if I remember, I will let you know. Give it this page. Come on. Come on. Can't remember. Oh, well. Maybe Gato will pop in later. In which case, he can tell you himself. I'm sure he'll remember. Or at least, pretty sure. Um, Blue robes. Here we go. Wait a second. What is that one? It's already there. Go here. Nice template. What is Amulet of Articulation? Is this the one you actually wear? There's a bunch of records for Amulet of Articulation, something about like the different scaled rewards that are in default Skyrim, but it's turned into just one flat reward um, in Requiem, of course, with the de-leveling. Lady says, I used to use better vampires. It has been a while since I stopped using it after they no longer changed uh, Serana and Harkon and someone else. That seemed like a good mod, though. Better van Really, um, it's kind of interesting. The vampirism mods that are out there for Skyrim are among the most like intricate and, um, I don't know. I, I guess people are just very passionate about their vampires. Vampires are a, a very popular thing for a lot of people. All right, here we go. Give me this robe swap script. Um, we're going to take the body, supply it there. Have I missed any other? I don't think so. Any other item equipment slot? stuff make sure here because that's another thing that I don't want to miss small details that I'm prone to missing while I'm doing this really die rose oh, excuse me so here because we've adjusted the body template in the first person flags and like the slots um, we will now not have uh, hoods same thing that swaps out the formerly hooded version with the new version so you can wear whatever hood you want you wear this robe you mix and match it you get a brown hood with his blue robes. Actually, these are the Mythic Dawn robes. So you want your own like special hood to wear with your Mythic Dawn robes? No problem. Cryptopia's got you uh, covered. Uh, Chaotic Tabris says, I just wish we had a better scripting system. There's so much potential when you can make heavier script mods without breaking the game. I know what you mean, man. Um, hopefully the, uh, the limitations just encourage people to be um, more conservative with their uh, scripting. I mean, that's kind of what's happened, but I do agree with you that a more fully featured scripting system would be fun. Uh, maybe with Elder Scrolls 6. Who knows? I'm very excited to see what we're going to get out of that. Plain robes. Shavi's Amulet of Zenithar. Bloody black boots. Gross. Necromancer robes. Mm. Black Mage Hood. Here we go. 
This one's not even playable, actually, but we'll forward the changes all the same. Why not? Black robes, here we go. Um, black robes of quickening. I'm going to keep them... Actually, why are these ones... They still have the object effect. I'm going to keep that name. Um... What annoys me most is that I see stuff we can do with scripts in Oblivion and simply can't do in Skyrim. Oh. Because of something that could easily be fixed by Bethesda if they wanted it. What are you talking about specifically, CT? If you don't mind me asking. Um, I'm going to leave that named as is. So that the name references the fact that they're enchanted. Charred Necklace. Shea Gorath's Outfit. There's the level-up music from Morrowind. Okay, you would think that Shea Gorath's boots would be worth more than 35, but I don't care enough to change it. Um, this should all be fine. I would say. Ancient Nord Amulet, huh? All good. Jester's clothes. Noble embroidered garment. Nothing needs to be changed there. That's all good. Fine quilted clothes, fine shoes. The exciting world of Ultimate Skyrim development, of modding. This is what all your favorite modders do. Well, it's not true. Some of them use the CK instead, but I guarantee that what they're doing is just as exciting. Um, Snotno says, any plans for a dragon mod like Deadly Dragons? Definitely not. Um, I don't know how much you've played Requiem as is, but the dragons are pretty beastly. Um, if I, I probably wouldn't implement Deadly Dragons ever, um, just because I used to use it actually. It's pretty intense for something like Requiem. Um, I did like Dragon Combat Overhaul just because of the, uh, the AI changes to dragons. That's what I was most interested in, was making them a little bit different to fight in terms of how they behaved. So I'm always on the lookout for mods like that. And I do believe there's a new one that I can't quite remember right now either. Um, but if anyone knows what I'm talking about, feel free to shout it out. That one was uh, intriguing to me. But nothing that really kind of flatly makes them that much harder. Um, because it's really not necessary in Requiem. Here we go. Get that nice hair slot. Um... And now, I will add the... Oh, it's already got the keyword. Perfect. Don't even need it. Shrouded hood. Oh, wait a second. Oh, see, okay, this is interesting. This is a case where... Let's see, Chaotic Tabber says, Have you ever tried Duke Patrick's combat mods for Oblivion? They have locational damage that works perfectly fine. It happens because the scripts are not running on a virtual machine. Ah... I have not tried it, although, I don't know if you saw this, um, there's a new locational damage mod that's just an SKSE plugin. Um, I've not tried it out myself, but I've heard good things. It doesn't have the same problems that the original locational damage mod did. Anyway, this is an instance where I'm actually going to need to keep um, KFR's, uh, what's it called, slot data, because this is a pre-enchanted hood. So if we were to make it so that you could wear a circlet with it, um, that would cause the same problem, whereby you would have too many um, enchantment slots. One more than you should. Taber says, like Mascar's Oblivion Overhaul, which has dynamic factions, crafting, which Vanilla Oblivion does not have, and is a full game overhaul, and is pretty much made entirely of scripts, which has the advantage of making it compatible with pretty much everything. Yeah, I think you mentioned that in the last stream, too. It sounds awesome. Um, yeah, I also don't know how to do SKSE plugins at all. Um, what are you going to do? Maybe one day. I'm with you there. That's all good. Blue robes of regeneration. Copy this right over. Body flag. And then different template. Bing, bang, boom. And we got to get rid of these guys too. The armature armor add-ons which are no longer necessary because it is a robe 
and hood separation. Same thing here. What do we got? Shrouded masked cowl, which has the same... Actually, here. So we don't need to change that one, actually. And we're going to keep that. Thieves Guild hood. Um, this one also has an object effect. And since that is the only change, is the body template. We can leave those as is. Um, and this one we will need to forward. Go change the editor ID too. Why not? Common mage hood. And we'll get rid of this model. And we'll change this one here. And we will add our favorite keyword Nerevar Rising Reprise. Oh, dang it. I thought we already had it saved in our data. I guess not. These have it, though. No problem. Give me that. Shadow Shane says, looking at the locational damage SKSE, it looks like it supports more than just humans too, so that's awesome. It is awesome. It is something that would need to be balanced around for sure, but I would very much like to include that at some point. Get our template. Whoops. That's the wrong spot. Oh, excuse me. Another. Um, alright, that one's good common mage robes yes please bam go data template clothes robes mage novice fine mage robes perfect I wonder why these ones have entries already in ultimate Skyrim I don't remember offhand that's okay there boom there's that Elast hmm. That one's fine. This one is what do we got here? Forsworn headdress. Um, we can make that so that it has a circlet as well, and we'll add our favorite keyword for this bad boy and one right here, and add it there, and a nice copy paste. Nice. Um, it's inscribed amulet, huh? Alakir clothes. And what else we got? Alakir hood, same thing. Let's make our changes. Same change. Add our keyword. Bam. Mm, there we go. Um, Chaotic Tabra says, same guy, also has an equipment durability mod, which runs entirely on an SKSE DLL. Haven't tried it, but it's pretty insane. Hey, that's something I might be interested in. Um, as an alternative to loot and degradation, I do like that mod quite a lot, but I'm always evaluating alternatives, um, just to see, you know. Sometimes another mod will do something that you like a different way that works better or worse. It's always good to look. What do we got here? This is Ancient Shrouded Masked Cowl. It, oh, it does have an object effect, in which case we're just going to leave it as is. Um, or, yeah, we're going to have to leave that one as it is. Guildmaster's Hood. Um, this one also has an object effect. That one's okay. Thieves Guild Gray Cowl. This one does not have an object effect. I remember that because I already did this. Boom. There you go. Where's our keyword? There it is. Exciting. Carlia's Gloves. Um, this one does have an enchantment, but we can't use these gloves. That's okay. Um, it's kind of interesting. You can see here that uh, Nightingale Hall, which is the mod that we have, is spoilers for the end of the Thieves Guild quest line, but you get a follower. Her name is Carlia. And um, Nightingale Hall overhauls the overhauls the um, player home that you get as a result for beating that quest line. Excuse me. And uh, it also makes a couple changes to Carlia to make her an even doper follower, which is appropriate, I think, for having completed an entire quest line, which is not easy to do in Requiem. Um, I'd say the Thieves Guild is one of the easier ones, but it's still not easy. 
I would say. Party shoes. Never seen these before. I can't remember what they look like offhand. Um, but I hope that they make a person want to party. I know that's why I buy them. Find cool to clothes. That's okay. Um, oh, that was the party clothes. That's the counterpart to the party shoes. Robes of Vermina. Wow. I remember this one I changed to child's common shoes. Because NJM, thank you very much for following. I thought that children's common shoes didn't sound as good as child's common shoes. Oops. Boom. Take these object bounds. Whoops. Forward those right along. And here's our new model. I wonder what's different there, too. I'm curious. Noble gilded wrist guards. I don't need the name change. But I would like... No, I don't want to copy it as a new record. I would like this keyword, which adds the perk from weapons and armor fixes. Perk. Um, that makes punching a little bit better. I believe that's what this is. Check it out. Referenced by just a bunch of armors. Fists of Steel Light. Check this shit out. Um, fortifies your unarmed damage. Just a nice little touch. Nova Siri, how you doing? This is so neat to watch you work on this stuff. Well, I hope so. Um, <laughs> I feel like it would just be the driest thing in the world. But some of you guys do seem to enjoy it. Um, and I do enjoy it a lot of the time, too. Um, this part is a, a little trickier because, as we said earlier, I don't know if you were around for it. This is all work that I did earlier today, um, which for some reason was lost on saving when I exited X-Edit. Um, but it's a lot of fun to me to be like in X-Edit. Nova Series is doing good, working on some art while listening in. Your voice is great background sound. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you very much. Um, I know how that goes. I listen to a lot of content in the exact same way, um, where it's just kind of on in the background. And I, I don't know. I like to uh, just, it's nice to have some background noise. I just follow a lot of like creators whose work I like, and I could just listen to them talk about anything really. So I suppose I understand why something like this would be palatable for some. Here we go. Get rid of this model data. Bing, bang, boom. Get rid of here. And I believe that's all we need for that one. Noble Imperial Robes. This one we got new object bounds. This one's interesting because it shares the object bounds with Requiem. That usually doesn't happen. There we go. Nova Series says, Dead silence is more distracting than normal for me, so having sound helps focus me. Yeah, I get that. It's like white noise, you know? Um, I remember Tyler. That's my good friend, for those of you who don't know. Um, also, the person who created the Belmont Boy intro and the Ultimate Skyrim intro, if you're curious. Um, he used to work in this office, and they actually installed um, very subtle white noise emitters, which I thought was kind of interesting, because apparently they've seen a lot of studies that show how weird it is for people if it's too silent. So you want some kind of sound playing, like puts people at ease. I believe there's also like brown noise or something. Um, I don't, maybe that like one of you guys knows about it, but something I, I can't remember if it's supposed to be comforting or alarming, but one of the two. Um, Snotno says, "Do you make good art at Nova Siri?" Oh, it'd be cool if we could see it. Um, super excited for 4.0. Can't wait to play my vampire in the new system. Well, I'm glad. I think it's gonna be very fun. Uh, frankly, I'm very, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm excited for 4.0 primarily, uh, for a lot of reasons, but primarily if I had to pick a reason, it's just because I think that 4.0 transforms Skyrim more than ever before into like a, a it feels like a, a real place or it feels like a living place, um, that is much more of a world for your characters to inhabit versus like a cardboard facade. Um, it always makes me smile when I see people say how much they enjoy playing even like 3.4 of Ultimate Skyrim and how it really feels to them like a living, breathing place. And I think that feeling, perhaps more than any other element of the gameplay experience, is what will be 
like skyrocketed, um, if that makes sense. Um, Chaotic Tabra says, I know the brown noise from like South Park. Um, I swear, am I thinking of something different? I'm pretty sure that's what they call it. I think if you like YouTube, actually, maybe we shouldn't tell people to YouTube brown noise. Maybe we'll come up with the actual one. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm stretching. Nova Siri makes mostly web comics, but she made her Dunmer vampire into a Pathfinder character. Made a reference for him in your current Pathfinder game while I wait for 4.0. That's very cool. That's really, really awesome. God, I need to play some fucking tabletop RPGs. It's been my dream for so long to get a group together and actually play like some D&D. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to find a bunch of adults who can make their schedules kind of coalesce. You really need to actively try um, and get people to coordinate one day. One day I will manage. I hope. <sighs> Helmet of the Old Gods. Hmm. Leather hood. See, like, some of this, though, would have had to have been... Oh, no. Because then I should have added the keyword. So, no. I was thinking that some of this was saved from the, uh, the data loss, but I don't think so, actually. Um, Shadow Shane says, I think Better Cities had an in-game menu, but you had to use the console to access it. Uh, this was COBL. Oh, this must be Oblivion Mods. Um, for Fonte says, I'd be down to play at that table. Maybe, oh man, maybe one day we can do some sort of, like, viewer, um, like Dungeons and Dragons thing. Like, where I could sit down with, like, viewers maybe over, what's the tabletop simulator? That would be cool. Caldic Tabra says, uh, damn, same for me, man. I try to get a group together in my university, but it's hard because the classes are all over the place. It's, it's tough to organize, like I said, like adult schedules, you know? Um, fuck, even when you have people who roughly have the same schedule, like a nine to five, it's still tough to do. Um, Nova says, I have a total of two groups, one run by a friend of mine, the other I run, which is based on my webcomics universe. That is so cool! Oh my gosh. Well, feel f uh, free to link it if you desire. Um, I could also understand if you want to keep it private for you and your friends, but that is really, really cool, Nova. Uh, Roll20. I have heard good things about Roll20 as well. Um, I do know that some people I've seen have started to use Tabletop Simulator instead. Um, I couldn't tell you about the pros and cons of either approach. Not personally. What do we got here? Victoria Vici's Wedding Band. Leave that. Exactly as it is. Got all these amulets. Oh, excuse me, I'm yawning today. I actually yawn a lot most days. I was at the gym um, yesterday morning, and uh, one of the employees of my gym was like, "Bro, you're always yawning all the time." I was like, "I'm sorry, I can't help it." Also, it doesn't help things that I go to the gym first thing in the morning. I'm definitely still a little bit groggy. Um, it's kind of nice doing it that way, if you have the option. Um, it's just, uh, I, Liz, my fiance, put it a really good way. Um, oh, fuck yeah. Okay, Nova, link the thing. Nova Siri, Deviant Art, Solomon reference. Whoa, that is so badass. Oh my god. That is so cool. That's the character. Yeah, this is the dumber turned drow sorcerer. Drow sorcerer? I don't remember. Cadillac Tabra says, I bought the fifth books because my cousin wanted to play it. She gave up. I never got to use the books. That was a bummer. Oh, that is so cool, Nova. I really like it. Um, Fine, quilted clothes. Oh, this one. We'll, we'll forward it. How about this? Just so we can get those object bounds. Mm. Here we go. Gimme. And... Gimme. What about this? Mage Boots of Sneaking. Um, that one can stay as it is. Mage Boots of Major Sneaking. Wow. Not messing around. Hmm. All these should not need any sort of edits from me. 
Um, they are all, oh, all templated. This would need. Oh no. That's okay. Nightingale hoods. See, that's what I mean. Sometimes you can have little records in there that actually do need your attention, but they're nestled between a bunch of stuff that does not. It's a little tricky. Mm. Mm, listen to that music. What is this? King and Country. Oblivion soundtrack. I need to get the Skyrim songs in this playlist, too. I have them on my computer, I just haven't uploaded them to my Google Play music. <laughs> Chaotic Tabris, I to this day regret turning down a job translating RPGs because I didn't think the guys would really be able to get the rights. Well, uh, did they? Because I think otherwise that's a, a good reason to turn down a job. Good reason, excuse me. Nova, that is a... God, I, I'm humbled at the comparison to Dungeons & Dragons because... Hopefully, the my interest in tabletop RPGs like comes across in the design of Ultimate Skyrim. They're a definite inspiration. Um, I feel like I, I don't know. I guess because I've played a lot of like video games that are built on top of tabletop RPG rules, so I like understand it that way. Um, I just find it it's like kind of odd that at a certain point, if you have this much interest in tabletop RPGs but you've never played one. You know? What do we got here? That's all fine. Prisoner's Cuffs. Necromancer's Robes of Quickening. Oh. That's why... Oh. I was wondering why they wanted that changed. Hold on a second. Hold on just a, a dang minute there. Um, there's Necromancer's Robes. Yeah, here we go. Close. Necromancer's Robes. Oh, that's why they wanted this gone. I understand the object effect. Okay, well, I actually am going to retain that change then. Um, alright, well, that changes things a little bit. Here's the hooded one. I don't think I've gotten here yet. All right, all right, I understand. I get where you're coming from. Well, what I'm gonna have to do there then, I suppose, is change, well, I'll sort by, what's it called? I guess that is a good point. Um, Chaotic Tabra says, well, if you think about it, D&D &D is a huge part of the US's DNA, Ultimate Skyrim's DNA. It's true, even just by virtue of being built on top of the Elder Scrolls, which it's hard to have any sort of role-playing universe that doesn't have some sort of influence from Dungeons and & Dragons and other tabletop RPGs. Your Requiem was heavily inspired by Dungeons and & Dragons and by Baldur's Gate, which uses AD&D 2nd Edition as a base. That is true. Lady, um, you fell asleep for a bit. Actually, so what happened was... um. Uh, while you were asleep, I released 4.0, so that's pretty cool, I would say. But I only released it for like a brief five-minute window, so you might have been out of luck. I think the link expired. Sorry. It's just, you know, sometimes that's what happens. Oh, man, we haven't talked about this yet. Also, by the way, I got 20 minutes left on the stream. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, it always astounds me to see that you guys are willing to sit here with me while I do... Uh, this stuff, but like we said before, I do kind of get it. I like having this kind of stuff in the background, um, on in the background. But we haven't talked about the Steam Summer Sale. Has anyone seen any stuff that they like or anything that they're interested in? Because I certainly have. Um, I always like to wait until the end of the sale anyway, just because um, I'm not going to go searching through to see all the featured deals and the sale. Actually, if one of you guys, if this is not the case, please correct me or else I'm going to miss um, some sales that I might be interested in, but um, I believe that the sales what you see right now is the same price um, That a game will be discounted at for the entirety of the sale and that that price will stay Discounted until the whole sale is over So theoretically you could like make a big list of all the games that you see over the course of the sale that you're interested in And like pick them all up on the last day and you won't be missing any deals and please tell me if that's correct because I believe it is 
Um, let's see. Dark Souls 3 Deluxe is like 70% on sale. I did see that. Um, it sucks because I have Dark Souls 3, like, regular, like, the base game, which I got on sale for a really good price. Um, but it doesn't have any of the DLCs. And I checked, and I don't think you can buy the DLCs for Dark Souls 3 discounted at the moment. I think they're still full price if you're trying to buy them individually. Oh, well. Well, Kalali says, no need, no need you to stream longer. I'm stuck in a hotel with nothing else to do. I'm so sorry, my friend. Although, what I can say is that, um... When I'm starting to look a lot more at streaming, um, I've been having a really good time with it. And even just supplementing, I think I'm gonna be having like my kind of consistent like YouTube series, like the ultimate Skyrim slot, and then just uploading VODs of streams um, otherwise. But uh, I wanna stream a lot more and like a lot more consistently. So I'm gonna be coming out with a new uh, stream schedule after beta four releases, I would say. Um, when I have, because right now, I mean, between now and beta 4, I'm going to have to spend virtually all of my time, my free time, doing development in order to make the deadline. Um, but after that, I can look into it. Um, what else we got? Wild says, been good, mate. Been working on my own Skyrim SE mod list. Hey, that's really cool, Wild. Um, let me know if you need any help with anything on the back end, because this is kind of like, you know, the stuff that I know. Um, I don't know Special Edition quite so well, um, but I'm sure a lot of it carries over, I would hope. Uh, Ferfante says, currently going to school to become a game dev. This stuff is cool to me. I'm glad, my friend, and good luck with your studies. Uh, what else we got? Um, oh, yeah, Chaotic Tavers. I saw that, that Shadow Run, Re Shadow Run Returns is free on Humble Bundle. Um, I probably will pick it up anyway, but I haven't yet. because It's definitely one of those games I wanted to play, and I started playing a long time ago and like fell off. Just I know it's such a time investment that I won't seriously like do it i try not to purchase games that i know i'm not going to play um even if it's free i suppose but hey why not just grab it anyway in case i do one day oh let's see uh finn this is loving these pixels thanks work wi-fi sorry about that finn um also hello nice to see you too um I figure this stuff is so small already because it's in 4k and then it's 4k scaled down for the purpose of the overlay um It'd be impossible to make out. Um, I have a big cock. Says, any mods in the mod suggestion thread that caught your eye? Um, there's many. Um, I'm trying to keep a lid on that for now just because... Um, well, let's just say I don't want to hype up anything that doesn't end up making it in. Um, and I haven't... Like, the most recent one I haven't gotten to go through as intricately as I did the first one. Um, but rest assured that anything that shows up in those threads, um, I look at and anything I think is cool. I add on my list of like, I have kind of a couple different categories for like new mods. Some are essential, some are non-essential. Other ones are like nice to haves, um, to use the, uh, um, what's it called? Consulting terminology that Liz always uses. Let's see what we got. Humble Bundle links it to your Steam account. If you get it, did it earlier myself. Honestly, it might be worth it then. Um, Finn says, I'm also watching it non-maximized on a 4K screen. Nice. Oh boy. All right, so, if I recall, I just now understood something that I did not understand before, which means I'm now gonna sort this by editor ID, and we are going to go to, let's see, clothes. Looking for anything that says robes here. Um, but I believe it's blue robes. Be blue or Archmage's robes, no clothes. Common mage hood, emperor's robes. What were the ones from before? Common hood. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Where's the one? There's necromancer, mythic dawn robes. These ones do have an object effect. Okay, that one's a little bit different. Um, I'm looking for the monk robes. Here we go. Those didn't have an object effect either, so those are okay. Um, here we go. I haven't edited these ones yet, have I? No, these ones are later. I know they are. Because I know where they are in the form ID list. Here we go. Um, why are those ones? These ones are alright. Those ones I don't have to worry about yet. I'm just looking for the ones that I have already been through. This is perhaps not the best way to do it. Sigic robes. Looking for clothes robes blue. Here we go. It was the Black Robes of Quickening. Um, these are different ones. What the F? I'm confusing myself. 
Uh, let's just go back to organizing by form ID. That'll be the simplest way to do it. Just the most tedious emperor's robes. I, what I'm looking for right now are robes that I skipped over thinking that they were not supposed to have their object enchantment when it turns out they actually are. Or no, scratch that, reverse it. Thinking that they were supposed to have their enchantment and they are not because there are alternate versions added um, that do have the enchantments. Blah, blah, blah. Brown gloves. Common hood. Is it Greybeard's robes? No. Mm, it was just like the something of quickening. I swear to God, it was like black robes. Um, this is like not really something that matters that much, frankly, but it's the kind of thing that drives me crazy if I know that I missed it. Um, so I have to go back and get it. Otherwise, I'll just I'll go nuts. Miner's clothes, Medesi's silver ring, blue robes, here we go. This is what I'm talking about, or at least it's close, I feel like. Um, that's okay. No, it's not what I'm talking about, actually. Template clothes, oh, it's one of the templates. Meth, how you doing, my friend? Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> it sounds like I'm a, I really gotta stop referring to you as meth. Maybe meth roll instead. It's like, sounds like my good friend Methamphetamine dropped by the stream. Um, come on, baby. Where are you at? Blue robes here. That's the same. That one's okay. Mythic Dawn robes. We just checked that one. That's not the one. Thank you, Titan D. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Plain robes. Could this be? Here we go. No, here it is. So it was actually close to the other one, the one that we just adjusted right now, Black Mage Hood. And then this one already has an enchantment on it. Oh, it's non playable. I don't care. I remember that. Um Matt says, hanging in there, just killing time before I go to bed. Work was hell exhausting today, so you know, I do know, my friend. Um, I mean I can't complain, but I just uh earlier I had some work done. What everything we're doing right now, I already did like earlier in the day and we're just like running back through it cuz somehow the data was lost, which is really annoying. Um Kalali is correct that if I was on meth it would keep me awake. Kalak Tabris says hello Titan D S seeing all this mods just 2 days after I start a 100% vanilla run is killing me, Belmont boy. Well, honestly, man, you got time. Um go ahead and enjoy your vanilla run. Um babe mm, Oh, I was going to say Beta 4 doesn't come out until uh, a week and a half from now. A little bit less, actually. Um, oh, I know. Yeah. A week and a half from now. But I don't even know if you'd want to do beta builds anyway. Because they're kind of a pain in the ass to install. Even more so than the ordinary Ultimate Skyrim 3.4. You will have to do that. Ah, oh, Cove 4.0. Oh, the elusive double yawn. Nova says, always more mods. That is actually true. God knows that even after 4.0 releases, there's going to be <laughs> a lot more going in. Okay, here we go. Um, black Matred, black robes. These ones still have their enchantment, so that one didn't even apply. So that whole little thread that I just went chasing ended up unnecessary. Wasn't that wonderful? Oh, well, don't care. Sometimes it's the way she goes, to quote my man Bubbles. Um, and I was on what? I remember going through here, and then went through here. Here we go. Necromancer's ropes of quickening. That was my thing. Here we go. Copy is override. My shrouded masked cowl. Titan D says, I mean, I'd love to try Ultimate Skyrim, but I probably wouldn't install too many graphics mods because my PC sucks. I totally get that, man. I've tried to keep the actual, like, system requirements down um, so that people can benefit just from the, uh, what's it called? The gameplay improvements. What is this helmet? This is the non-playable one. This is not the cowl that the player ends up getting, is it? Well, either way, I'm going to leave that slots as is because if the player does get it. Um, 
then it'll swap anyway. And they won't be able to use the circlet. Okay, black robes of quickening. Reference by what? Okay, that's fine. Um, black robes. Here we go. Ultimate Skyrim. That's all Gucci. Plain robes. This one too. Plain here. Take this. Put it there. There we go. Um, get rid of these bad boys. And that one should be good. Yes. There we go. Um, let's see. Titan D, that's a great part about the required plus optional mod installation. You should be able to just install the required stuff to keep that performance up. I'm also trying to make at least a couple more mods um, optional in 4.0. Um, let's see, AMD FX 6300 and a 1050 Ti. Oh man, you can handle a lot with that. Um, shit, you could potentially even handle the almost the whole thing. Um, but definitely the core installation, if you're not going with any graphical mods at all, you will definitely be able to run it. I wouldn't worry there. Kalali says, thinking about trying a Requiem 2 base run through. Base run through. I don't know why I read that weird. Until US 4 comes out with just the mods covered by the patch central. Yeah, also, Methril is right. The thing that would kill you is the processor. Um... But if you, same thing as if you skip over a lot of those optional mods, I think you'll definitely be able to play it still. Ouch. Um, <laughs> what the heck? So Finn just tried to message with his stats and auto mod held it because um, it thinks it's he's divulging his identity or something. Oh, maybe they think he's trying to dox someone with their address. Hilarious. I guess better to be safe than sorry. Ferfante says, do you think SLI would cause a problem? Honestly, it might. Um, things could have changed since the good old days, so to speak. But um, SLI used to kind of... This is my understanding, anyway. SLI used to kind of cause some problems with Skyrim. And I just... SLI builds in general. I've thought about it over the years. I've never done it myself just because it seems like so many games are... Like, they just don't know what to do with SLI or Crossfire. And in some cases, like, you're definitely not getting the performance increase, I think, that you deserve when you purchase a second card in a lot of games. And I imagine Skyrim is already so unoptimized that it's not going to utilize that second card the way it should be utilized. That would be my guess, anyway. Um, that's, like, at best. At worst, it actually causes more problems. Okay, here. Black robes. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I know, so Automod does uh, try and clock your um, system specs, but you can type in people's emails and it doesn't block that at all. Oh yeah, and um, this is actually a really good point too. As Metherol says, Automaton has um, basically like performance presets, which is so fucking sick. Um, it's going to be real cool. Oh, sorry. Oh, excuse me. Fuck. It's going to be about that time. It's past nap time. Does anyone actually get to take naps? Because I wish I got to take more naps. My problem is that uh, when I take a nap... I mean, I could take a nap if I wanted to. It's my own choice not to. Because I always wake up so groggy. It's like I can't do anything else the rest of the day. And if I go to sleep like right now, I just won't be able to go to sleep later. Sleeping problems. Hmm. <laughs> you guys just posting straight up email addresses and it doesn't even that's very strange to me I guess maybe it's concern is over addresses um, like an email is less sensitive I suppose although you can really do a lot with someone's email address nowadays too and track all kinds of shit oh what do we got here template clothes monk robes blue bam and blue robes bam body template all right, T-minus five minutes, boys and girls. Let's see how much we can get done lightning round. Um, it's like we're about up to where I was at before I started the stream. How wonderful. That's all good. Blue robes. Got Matthew Toth just subscribed. Thanks, Matthew, if you're out there. I don't know if you're in the stream or not. 
Um, 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 blue robes, body template. Fucking, uh, get rid of these model file names. Apply template here. Bam! Blue robes. Clothing and clutter fixes. Right across. Give me that virtual machine adapter. Blue robes. Body. <gasps> uh, don't need that. Can get rid of this, and that, and that, and this. Bam! Um, lady says, I just took a nap, so yes for me. Titan D, if you'd like to know what I'm doing right now, so I'm updating clothing and clutter fixes. Um, here, I'll run through this since we have only five minutes left. I was talking about this earlier, but I'll give a refresher for anyone who wasn't there. Um, in this record, um, everything that I just did here was to forward the uh, robe swap script. What you're seeing here is a an outfit, a robed outfit that normally in the base game included a hood as well, so you couldn't wear the hood and the robe separately. That's something that clothing, clothing and clutter fixes likes to change so that you can separate the robes from the hoods, mix, match, do whatever you like. Um, so I'm allowing it to do that by forwarding that script. I'm also changing the slots that the equipment occupies to only the body as opposed to the hair and the body, which is how it intends to do it when there's a hood and a, a robe. Um, and down here, I am removing the armature models uh, for hood and the two hood varieties for beast races, Khajiit and Argonians, because they are no longer necessary because the robe does not contain a forced hood anymore. And then also down here, you are forwarding the template data for the armor so that it pulls all of its stats, necessary stats, from the template, which you can see right here. Bing, bang, boom. <laughs> is this loss? What is that? It's my starter Pokemon, Masingno. Oh, fuck me! That's something I can talk about, too. I'm trying to, like, since I'm going to be streaming more um, soon, I'm um, thinking about games to play. I think I'm going to do kind of more of a variety thing because I really like to play games, right? And there's a lot of different types of games that I enjoy that I thought would be fun to stream. Um, but I've heard about this new Pokemon ROM that's, like, super amazing called Crystal Clear that basically kind of turns um, Pokemon, like, gold and silver into, like, an open world game where you can do all the gyms and, like, do anything in any order you like, uh, which sounds super fucking cool to me. Um, so I was thinking about it. Let's see. Nova Siri says, uh, since we have five minutes left, going to show what I've been working on while I've been watching. I want to see that shit. I'm going to click it. Click it right here. I'll show it on stream, too. Illustration by Nova Siri. Check it out, everybody. Blam. Oh, and then Walt here. Let me, can I scroll up to and find the other art that you posted? I'm sorry I didn't show it the first time. I didn't even think about it. Here we go. Here's another one. Is it okay if I show this on stream? Is that cool with you, Nova? Because this other one, I'm assuming it's just a picture. I'll, I'm definitely going to wait for your go ahead. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just want to make it, I was like, just showing everyone's personal information on the stream. Here we go. Here, how about this? I'll just open up the image. So you can see, check this out. Bam. Look at that. That is so dope. Man, we should do that more often. If people want to post their art and stuff, I'll totally highlight it. Because everything that's on my primary monitor um, shows up. It's actually kind of crazy with this double stream setup. It's like everything that shows up or on my primary monitor goes to um, OBS on my main computer, which actually isn't streaming at all. It's just sending the preview image to the capture card monitor, which is what's being picked up um, from you guys and what you can see. It's crazy. And then the uh, webcam is plugged directly into the computer. And that's our time. So as always, thank you guys so much for joining me. Seriously, it warms my heart every time I get to do one of these. Um, at the very least, I will be back same time next week at 4 p.m. on Thursday. I'm trying to sprinkle in more streams, like I said. Um, I don't know if that will be possible um, next week just because I'm really going to need that time to like kind of dig into development and do stuff super fast to make that Beta 4 deadline. But if not next week, like I said, I am uh, trying to... Oh, and also I'll be gone the week after that because we're going to be on vacation um, for a friend's wedding in Chicago for 4th of July. So I'll be gone most of that week. Um, but very soon, um, I'm going to be adding a lot more Twitch streams to my schedule. So be on the lookout for that. And I will definitely notify all of you as to what the deal is. Thank you again for joining me. And I will see you next week. And now I will 
find where to stop the stream from. Goodbye. <laughs>